my chosen designer for assessment to what was good design is Alexei Brodovich. An artist, director, photographer and famous designer, Brodovich was born in 1898 Russia. His early life consisted of wealthy education as his father was an accomplished physician. Until the age of 16 where he became the first lieutenant in the Tsar's White Army. Upon return from war due to injury, Brodovich was placed in financial struggle. This is where he found himself amongst a group of Russian artists inspiring him to become a painter. Working for the first time in his life, Brodovich secured a job at Diaghilev's Ballet Russes as a painter for stage sets. Being a heavy influence, it was Diaghilev's approach towards design which encouraged and directed Brodovich towards more commercial forms of art. Brodovich went on to enter a poster competition which searched for the most creative and unique designs where he won first prize. His poster, Bal Banal, was the beginning of his graphic design career, which drew attention from many agencies and various designers. One agency, Maximilian Vox, which asked Brodovich to design for Martini Vermeer, a cartoonist, illustrator and publisher. Here he was based on strict geometric type designs with a basic colour palette resembling a constructivism style of design. During his reign at Maximilian Box, he became increasingly interested in the ideas shared by avant garde, which was also expressed within his own art, demonstrating innovation and experimentation, especially within the art culture. He soon became an art director at Athelia Studio, which gave him the ability to explore all aspects of his creative mind. He had already been established as one of the most prestigious designers of commercial art in Paris. Although eventually it began to lose the spirit of adventure for Brodovich, so he looked at the Western dream and moved to Philadelphia to teach design classes at the College of Art. Brodovich brought his modernist ideas to the students to inspire and encourage them to explore the boundaries. We learn by making mistakes. This was his key, especially when he opened his workshops known as the Design Laboratory. Here his aim was to challenge his students, to use their mistakes and expose them to capture the essence of design being limitless. Constantly contradicting himself to teach his students to think for themselves. His unique techniques gained attention and especially by a photographer, Ralph Steiner, who worked for Harper's Bazaar. Steiner introduced Brodovich to the editor-in-chief of the magazine, who immediately offered him a job. Brodovich invited several old friends to contribute to his avant grande style for the magazine. Eventually he became the first art director to integrate image and text together, a revelation in American design. Brodovich tended to crop his photographs and Brodovich tended to crop his photographs and utilize the full spread of the page to depict an image, leaving a copious amount of white space that would go on to be considered elegant but also a waste of space. This brought a new dynamic for fashion layouts to develop a consistent and nice flow throughout magazines. Despite preferring Bodini as a typeface, Brodovich utilized a typeface that would suit and contribute to the emotion of the photograph to influence the smooth flow, sometimes sacrificing legible. Brodovich also had a goal of developing a magazine that would stand out from others, that would be completely different and not follow the same trend. This is where Brodovich designed magazine covers with just type and color, with no accompanying image. Unfortunately for this design, it only lasted for three issues until it was dropped for the old ways of imaged in text. Ability. During this time, it was not unusual for Brodovich to be absent from the bazaar office. This was expectedly due to many job offers and unexpectedly being a heavy alcoholic. Eventually causing him to get fired, he spent the last three years of his life back in southern France as his financial and health state deteriorated, passing away on April the 15th of 1971 as a part of the What Was Good Design exhibition by the Museum of Modern Art. They selected Brodovich's floor chair as it suited Dieter Ram's 10 principles of good design. 
The chair design is both visually interesting and innovative, being a focal point for its unique incorporation of rope with the curved wooden frame, deviating widely from stereotypical design of a modern chair. The plywood in form creates an armrest in conjunction with the rope makes an aesthetically simplistic piece, which remains both attractive and intriguing. In addition, the slow development and attention to detail with materials and the cuts of the plywood which make this chair so functional and a comfortable chair to sit in. What I've learned through studying Grotovich's work is that similar to what he taught in his workshops, his design is endless and I need to solve the problem myself. As well as good design isn't complicated. It can be the simplest combination of components that can create an interesting piece. In my previous artworks, I've usually tried to stay simple and create an environment, but by doing so, lay out extensively and overwork them. In my future artworks, I will avoid this. Focus on true simplicity and remember the basic designs of Brodovich's work.